Hey girl, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Misha. Thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review. We are back with a brand new review for Married to Medicine Season 10, Episode 14. If you are new here, then welcome. I give a lighthearted reviews with a little bit of laughter and a little bit of shade and a whole lot of detail. If you're back for a second or third time, then welcome back. Y'all, please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Share with a friend. Hit that notification bell so that you will be updated each and every time I upload a video. Now, child, let's get into it if we gonna get into it. This is the season finale, y'all. So when the episode first opens up, they're still in Hilton Head. Sweet Tea is about to knock Dr. G's head off with the paddle, child. They're doing an excursion with Toya and Eugene. Heavenly, Alicia, Phaedra, all the other ladies and the men are doing something different. The men are playing basketball and the ladies were eating breakfast, I think. So they asked Dr. Alicia, girl, what's going on with this uh, missing $150,000? Okay, where's the money? Where is Kimma's money? Okay, she said, well, I mean, he asked me about it and I just said, I didn't know. I mean, I need to check the account. Dr. Alicia, please stop. You're an educated woman and we know where it is. We know where the money is. And I mean, do you? That's why you always just sitting there smiling because you know you got a getaway stash. <laughs> you know and y'all stop asking this woman about this money on tv when you know this man is gonna watch this back y'all know she got some money set aside she gonna say it, it was for the kids Simone said girl I know you lying to Kimmel but you ain't got a lot of me I know that's right but she know y'all talk too much especially heavenly so she ain't about to tell y'all nothing and I don't blame her so then Dr. Jackie said well you know I mean have your account don't tell nobody but it's just us you can trust us no she can't trust y'all Heavenly says she appreciates Alicia and Kimmel because they remind her a lot of Dr. Damon Daddy and herself. She says she lied a little bit for the greater good of the relationship, but Alicia is way too honest. Child, let me find out Buddy and Dr. Damon Daddy set up like Alicia and Kimmel. Now, I don't mind you having your roles in your marriage. That's fine. But is he training you up? What's going on? So they're all telling her, girl, have your account, do your thing. Jackie is telling her to get some takeout, put it in the pot and act like she cooked. Okay, now I think that's going a little bit too far. Now, if you don't know how to cook, that's fine. But going to the Cheesecake Factory, and next thing you know, I got some food on the table. And then you go to the restaurant, and it tastes the exact same. Then I got some explaining to do. Absolutely not. Moving forward. In the next scene, everyone is getting ready for dinner. Uh, sweet tea, baby, you're a little boobalicious. Ma'am, that's too much booby around the other men. Now, I don't care what y'all say. I don't care if y'all, well, Misha, they're all married. And I don't care if y'all call me insecure. I don't care what it, what y'all say. I don't give a damn. <laughs> you will not have them big bazooms out in front of my man. It reminds me of the time where all the couples went on a couple's trip and Peter took them down to Jamaica and Phaedra came downstairs in that black mesh with that thong up her butt in front of Peter and all the other men and then twirled around. I said, oh, honey, now twirl on that. Absolutely not. Please put your boobalicious away. Okay. And when she came out, Simone was like, uh, are those things going to stay in? I'm surprised she was as quiet as she was. And Cecil was trying not to look. But I mean, boom, they're in your face. So just put them away, honey, put them away. So Simone says she told everyone to wear metallic for their 10th anniversary trip. It was giving classy Renaissance concert. It, that's what it was giving. It was giving, you know, the seasoned dolls going down to see Beyonce after church. That's what it was giving. <laughs> so they get to the dinner, right? And child, sweet tea didn't cuff them things up. Good job, sweet tea. Because Letitia, baby, them things was out. So I have to say the setting for the dinner was very pretty. Everything looked so peaceful and serene. It was really beautiful. Simone starts giving this speech about the highs and the lows in the past 10 years. And as they're doing these flashbacks, it reminded me of why I am so in love with Married to Medicine. It really did. And also, I still feel like Quad should have been at this dinner. Heavenly came season two. So for me, she ain't really given 10 year tenure either. Okay, yes, she was at the party when Mariah and Toya got in that fight. But that ain't got nothing to do with anything. That's neither here nor there. That's just a side note. I feel like all of the women who started this thing should have been there for the 10-year trip. I just That's just how I feel. And even though it's been tough, she said, 
They always come together and they support each other and they have overcome a lot. And I will say that this show has the most supportive cast of each other. Now they may vote you off the island, but the marriages, oh baby, the marriage is going to stay intact. So Dr. Jackie said, well, you know, if it wasn't for this trip, we may not still be married. So she started speaking her speech. Curtis looked like he's so withdrawn. I mean, he said a few words, but something about him it can't clean. And they ain't fooling me. But if they want to pretend like everything's all good and keep us out their business, then so be it. Simone then says to Dr. G, you know, um, you were there from the start with us. And we appreciate, you know, despite everything with your ex-wife, you came back around knowing that we wouldn't cause you any harm. Dr. G is not a victim. There were two people in that marriage. Both of them are responsible for the demise. So I don't even know what you apologizing to him for. It really trips me out that y'all have more empathy and sympathy for this man than you did Quad when she was going through her divorce. Let's not forget. Yeah, y'all rallied around each other, but y'all showed and rally around her child and y'all ain't fooling me. Go back and watch. The, the proof is in the show. So he said that he appreciates them, all the females. Please stop calling them females. You mean the women? You appreciate all of the women? the ladies okay he appreciates them embracing his new wife even though they were friends with quad are they embracing Letitia? oh that's what an embrace look like oh uh, okay so then phaedra pipes up and she said you know most groups they don't support marriages but this group y'all really rally around marriage yes we know you know honey because they kind of gave you an apollo the blues remember when kenya threw that i do i did i'm done party and Phaedra went looking for ginger ale. Child, that was a mess. Because Phaedra, I guess at the time, she didn't want Kenya celebrating, especially because Kenya had said that Apollo was kind of fine in the beginning. So I think this is what she's talking about. But that's one thing that I love about this show and this cast, that marriage is truly at the center of it. Truly. So she was like, well, if I was in this group, then my marriage might have turned out differently because I would have had support because that's really all you need. No, ma'am. No, ma'am, you are not going to blame the Atlanta housewives, lady. We not even going to play that. You didn't let them in like that. Plus, once you realized that Apollo was going asunder, as he likes to say, you disassociated from him. And that would not have changed your mind. They could have rallied around you. They could have given you a parade. They could have come to your house every day, all day and night. And you still would have divorced Apollo because you care about keeping up appearances. So don't sit with this group and act like, oh, if I was with y'all, then we would still be going. Girl, please. Moving forward. So then Simone asked around the table. She said, who has ever said I want a divorce? So everybody basically raised their hand, except I think Kimma, Jackie, Cecil, Heavenly, and Damon. I said, child, not Alicia raising her hand. She trying to escape with that 150000 <laughs> She got a nice little nest egg, honey. She ain't gonna never need Kimma again. Now, that's how you start a new life. Now, they were kind of shocked that Eugene had his hand raised, but he was like, yeah, baby, we had that conversation. Now, y'all know Toya probably took it there and he was fed up. Y'all know how Toya is. So then she said, well, you know, some people probably should, you know, come out of their situations. Why would she say that though, y'all? Why that camera panned over to Phaedra? I said, baby, the shade. Alicia gets in the confessional and tells us she wanted a divorce because she was pregnant. Her ankles were swollen. She could barely walk. And this man still wanted her to make stewed chicken. And she was like, no, I have had it up to here. Are you serious? I am pregnant. And you know, you really got to be going through something to want to get a divorce while you're carrying a baby. I said, baby, you done pissed her off. He going to say, well, when women want a divorce, Men take it seriously because the men hear that she's taking half and she's taking my kids. Uh-huh. And from that day forward, she started stashing that money and she ain't fooling me because all he thinking about is her getting half. So she ain't got to worry about half because she already took her half. Okay. So then Eugene speaks on how when Toya said divorce, it kind of woke him up and it triggered him to do better. So Toya gets in a confessional, you know, and it, this is the thing. Toya is always resting the entire marriage on Eugene's shoulder. What part do you ever play, Toya? I don't ever hear her take accountability for something that goes wrong in their marriage. It is always Eugene. That is exhausting. 
So then Cecil reminisces about when Heavenly performed their vow renewal. And he said it really meant a lot to him. And they were just going through some of the things. And as I was watching this, it felt more like a series finale. And I didn't like that because I started to get sad. And I'm like, all right, all right, all right, wrap this up. Wrap this up. Wrap this up. Simone, you stay speaking your speech. I don't know who made you the leader, but ma'am, we're going to have to wrap this thing up. Moving forward. Married to Medicine is my show. I don't care highs or lows. This was a little iffy season, but they really, truly never miss. So I would be so sad if it came to an end. So Heavenly said, you know, the couple that they've been moved by the most is Kimma and Alicia. Damon said, yeah, absolutely. We resonate with them. Now, certain aspects work in certain marriages, but I want to know in what other ways do you resonate with Kimma, Dr. Damon, daddy? Like what's going on? Now, I think that Heavenly sees a lot of herself in Alicia. So that's why she can relate to her. And like I said, I'm not going to speak on anybody else's marriage. If it works for you and you have your roles in your marriage down packed, then by all means, do you. So then they make a toast to the next 10 years. They start dancing it, dipping it, and doing it. Side note, Phaedra is so out of place with these married people. It's weird as heck. And it's not right to exclude those who helped build married to medicine. But you want to include a single woman. They could have kept each other company. Like, this just doesn't seem right. And Phaedra honestly looks out of place. Now, to be honest, y'all, I really feel like they brought on Sweet Tea to make Quad uncomfortable. Then they voted her off the island. That's what I truly think. And I feel like this show needs all of you. You're an ensemble cast. Each of you brings something special. That's why Married to Medicine is such magic. Your cast cannot be duplicated. If we took one of you away, I would still want you to come back. If they took Heavenly, I would want her to come back. If they took Toya, I want her to come back. If they took Simone and the megaphone in her folk, I would want her to come back. If they took Dr. Jacqueline away, I would want her to come back because you ladies create magic together. And y'all just be acting like it don't really matter, child. Anyway, next season, Fei Fei need to get on back over there to Real Housewives of Atlanta. Now, as much as I don't want to see her on my screen in any capacity, now she is doing good on tra Traders, but she doesn't fit in with this group. She just does not. So y'all, the trip is over. Everyone is back at home. We see a little montage of the couples. Alicia is having a birthday party for her little one. Phaedra is back in her bob. So baby, she bobbing around. She down there at Dr. Jackie's office meeting with her and Heavenly. So they're planning a med gala. It's like an ode to the Met gala, but for the medical community, the, in, the people in the industry, their spouses, their family, things like that. And I like that. Listen, uh, Heavenly. Dr. Heavenly, I'm speaking directly to you, girl. Come next season, I want to go. Because I'm about as close to medicine as Phaedra is. So if Phaedra can attend, then so can I. <laughs> then so can I. So follow up in my DMs. Please extend an invite and I will be in attendance. Moving forward. In the next scene, Eugene and Toya go to Cecil and Simone's house. So in the car, he was asking her if she had on underwear. Now, I'm not sure why he asked. I guess because of the cutouts, he could tell that she didn't. She walks in talking about why in the car, y'all, Eugene was asking me if I had on underwear. Ma'am, can you get a filter, please? Her husband is present. Why are you walking in here telling them you ain't got no drawers on? Why are you doing that? Toya is telling them about the Met Gala and how she has them sponsoring wines for the gala. And she doesn't feel like she should have to pay a thousand dollars since she's giving them wines. So then Eugene is trying to hustle and talk fast and confuse the people, but he ain't fooling me. Talking about Toya is bringing $1,400 worth of wine because if we multiply 40 times two, carry to one, divide by three, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. I'm talking about she shouldn't have to pay. She is occupying a space, so she needs to pay the $1,000 like everybody else. The wine was given to her, so she's out of pocket nothing, okay? They are giving her that wine so she can place it there to increase their sales. It's a sponsorship. So she is in turn taking that wine to this event and standing up doing absolutely nothing without paying. No, that's not going to work. She needs to pay. Over on the other side, Heavenly is letting Phaedra and Jackie know Toya has not put anything in. Phaedra gets in the confessional. She said, well, I brought more champagne than she did wine and I'm still paying. You know what? It's always an issue with one person not wanting to pay. It's best to get outside sponsors and have everyone pay equally. 
because it's going to always be some drama. Back over with Simone and Toya. Simone is telling Toya, girl, you are not a team player. Toya's talking about, no, I am. Then she's going to bring up the Napa trip. Girl, now you know that production paid for that Napa trip. Let's really be for real right now. And why are you acting like you don't have any class? Pay the $1,000. You know what? Most times you have to pay if you're involved with the event in any capacity. If you're a vendor, you have to pay for a spot. If you ain't got it, just say that. But I know that you do have it. You're just being cheap. Now you can keep that wine, girl. Nobody want that wine anyway. And that wine in Kroger's, child. So if you're not going to pay, just keep it and pay your way. And they can go get it from the Kroger wine aisle. And we all know Simone is Toya's minion. She's always trying to yell Simone into submission. Girl, it doesn't matter how much you yell and bully her. This is a Jackie event. And you know she ain't going against Jackie for nobody. In the next scene is the day of the Med Gala. And everybody's getting ready. They're on their way. Toya and Anila are on FaceTime being messy about Quad. Anila, please hush. You're not even a part of this season, honey. Go away. Y'all say you can't stand the lady, but you're always talking about her. So the gala is underway. The ladies are starting to arrive. Now, I loved Heavenly's dress. Now, the top was too small, and I wish she would have gotten rid of that Hilton head hair. Girl, you should have put your gala hair on, not your Hilton head hair. That's the part I didn't like, but the dress was everything. And Toya, now, you have been getting it wrong all season. That dress does not give Mad Gala. Girl, what is this? Child Heavenly is telling everybody that she meets. Don't drink Toya's wine because Toya didn't pay. So don't go over there and get that club wine because Toya, she don't like to pay. Child is giving she by Sheree. She don't pay. <laughs> Baby, them women down in Atlanta know they're going to skip out on the tab, ain't they? So Simone is over there talking to Anila trying to get some camera time, honey, because you know Anila trying to peek her head in. Ma'am, we haven't missed you. Okay, we, we might have missed Karen, but we dang sure didn't miss you, girl. You can go. So Jackie comes over there talking about Curtis is back in the DR. He couldn't wait. Dr. Jackie, you be on that phone and everything else. That man can't be trusted. Truth be told, I think he lives there. I think the two of you live separately. Allegedly. Now, child, I ain't the one to gossip, so y'all ain't heard it from me. Toya comes over there and says they told her to take down her signage because she didn't pay. I don't blame them. Your space is not free. You should have monetarily contributed. Bottom line. Here go, Anila. She brought the wine. Anila, zip it. You are not a part of this season and dr jackie and simone were like yeah and she also needs to give us her money girl anyway we know you you live and thrive off of those freebies because you know she's an influencer talking about she furnished her entire home with her influencer freebies so you know she don't care she think what toya doing is good girl you got the wine and you ain't got to pay you know that's a needless thing honey this is not that she needs to pay so everyone has arrived and Dr. Jackie gets up to give a speech to thank everybody for coming. So Heavenly gets the mic and she wants to thank the sponsors. She's like, I want to thank Dr. Jackie and Simone. So Toya from the audience corrects Heavenly and says, it's Dr. Simone. Well, baby, what she do that for? Now, Toya, why are you piping up knowing that you're going to get Heavenly's ignorance activated? Why? So Heavenly yells out, Toya, where's Toya? Oh, okay, because she didn't pay. She didn't get no sponsor, nothing. She didn't do anything. She did not pay. Oh, my goodness. Heavenly, it was the wrong time to address that. Please have some cooth. Like, I mean, it's supposed to be a classy, formal event. I feel like that was just as tacky as Toya not paying. Certain things I just think that we shouldn't do. But then I remember something and we're going to get into it. Eugene went over to talk to Dr. Damon. He was grabbing all on his arm and Damon was like, listen, bro, this ain't what you want. He was like, no, 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 I ain't got no beef with you. He went over there because he basically was like, get your wife. He didn't like that Heavenly tried to embarrass Toya. And then I thought about this, y'all. Okay, because I was finna go in on Heavenly, but then I thought about this. Didn't Toya pull that same stunt when Contessa's dad was ill and she sent Scott in her place and she completely embarrassed contessa in front of everybody so i feel like what goes around comes back around hey my baby honey y'all all act a fool dr damon don't want to hear that eugene so leave him long child moving forward so baby quad shows up 
I said, ooh, honey, it's supposed to get real. Here go Anila tiptoeing over to Toya. Uh, Quad's here. Toya gonna say, ooh, that's even more of a reason for me to leave. Why are you so pressed over Quad? You got the result that you wanted, so give it a rest. She was no longer a part of the season. You should have been so happy, but instead you're pressed, 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 pressed. Honey, shout out to Cardi. Why are you acting so much? I'm just so unbothered. Are you unbothered? Because it's giving bothered. It really is. Uh, Quad, you look good, girl. Phaedra, you looked nice as well. Dr. Jackie, I really loved your dress. Simone, you looked good too, girl. And I loved those shoes. Now, sweet tea, girl, I don't know what kind of 1999 hairstyle that was. And then you had one little braid coming down the back. I wasn't fond of that. The dress was given, eh, we'll, we'll, we'll let it make it. But I did not like Toya's dress. It just did not fit the occasion, I thought. Um, Alicia, your dress was very pretty. I don't know about the loofah arms of it all, but I think that you're a very schnazzy dresser. So I think you get it right most times. And you look very good with the reunion looks that I saw. I love your dress. Okay, let's continue to get into it. So Dr. Jackie goes, who invited Quad? The Bravo people. Can she come to the reunion or is that against the rules too? Why are y'all acting like she's the plague? It's gonna be okay. So she came in refreshed, baby. And Dr. Jackie comes over there telling Sweet Tea, you know Quad's here. Ooh, they so messy, child. Sweet Tea kind of smiled a little bit. And then she went over there where she was. And Quad was like, oh, Sweet Tea, what do people say? Your husband, I want to bring him over his like hug his neck. <laughs> Quad, the people said that you need to leave them damn people alone. So Dr. G comes over. But the, it was so funny, y'all, because when Dr. G saw Quad from across the room, he started fiddling with his ring. He looked like a bad kid that noticed that their mom was talking to their teacher and getting a bad report. I said, look at him. Come on over here. Your mama is talking to your teacher. So Dr. G comes over and Quad says, do you mind if I hug him across his neck? She said, you're going to have to ask him that. Now, Sweet T was hoping he was going to say, no, nah, let's just respect my lady. But he's talking about, yeah, you can Child, he couldn't wait to be touched. So he gave her permission. But my thing is why? Why quad? Especially with the way that y'all ended. Now I understand not having any hard feelings and, and you being over something, but I would have given a head nod and went on about my business. She's like, well, y'all good? Okay, well, congratulations. Let me see you, Dr. G. Okay. You haven't missed a beat? No, we're not going to talk to Dr. G about him missing a beat or his one-two step. We're not going to talk to him. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's just me, honey. I don't know. But I just felt like it was given too much. It should have been a quick one, too. Oh, hey, how y'all doing? And continued on. Quad said in her confessional, listen, I have purged from that man and that relationship. Her man, her problem. Now, I personally feel like it was a little much. All that carrying on is given. I'm trying to prove a point. But maybe that's just me. Some could argue, you know, she's in her her state where she feels like I don't have any feelings for this man. So it's nothing for me to speak to him but speaking is one thing but carrying on with a conversation and this and that child please sweet tea pulls dr g over to the side and she was like did it feel awkward because i could tell that you felt kind of weird about it he said i mean i don't i don't really know what i'm 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 confused i'm feeling confused now he said in a confessional he doesn't try to avoid her but if they never see each other again that's cool so then sweet tea said well i mean i kind of feel a way but, you know, we moving forward. I'm ready to have this baby. Child, she's trying to keep him focused. <laughs> Sweet T said, focus, focus. He saved Sweet T. Quad don't want him, child. Moving forward. Quad goes over. She's talking to Simone about the trip. Talking, and she going to, when Quad walked away, Simone going to say, Quad should have called after Napa to see where the friendship is. Simone, you really get on my nerves. You get on my central nervous system, girl, if you don't shut that mouth of yours, why on earth would this woman call you after you had her banished? After she flew all the way out to Napa, only for y'all to gang up on her at that table and tell her she is no longer welcomed around you. Do you really think that this woman was supposed to grovel at your feet? You expected a conversation after that? And let's be really real. The phone works both ways. Y'all iced her out, y'all kicked her out, and you embraced two more. Erase, replace, embrace a new face. And that's exactly what y'all did. Moving forward. So, child, it's time for the gala to be over. Dr. Jackie gives the closing statement. She said, Heavenly and Simone are always going to fight. 
Toya is going to irritate the most irritating of everybody. And Quad will always be around. She goes away, but she comes back. The only person that can destroy Quad is Quad. Girl, bye. Y'all should have had some end cards instead of Dr. Jackie and his judgy little speech, girl, because we still watching you. Well, at least I am and don't think I forgot. And that was the end of the season. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you think about Quad speaking to Dr. G and Sweet Tea. Was it given? I'm going to let y'all know that it's cool and we can be in the same room so I can keep my job. Or was it giving... I'm doing too much to try to prove I'm unbothered, i.e. Toya. Y'all let me know. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.